Hi, I'm just jumping in with a disclaimer here. I know Easter's gone, but I couldn't put this up over the weekend. I, I thought I'd share the video anyway. And these DIYs can be used for spring, not just Easter. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, I hope you're well. I'm here with a last minute spring and Easter DIY crafty kind of video. I recorded these DIYs in the week and it's been Easter holidays here. So the boys were making holy for noise. So I've had to do like voiceover. But it sounds a little bit tinny, so please excuse that. Also, now today it's like a really hot day, so people are in their garden making noises, so please excuse that. Also, my allergies are playing up, so yeah, I sound a little bit funny. So with all that being said, let's get into the video, and please excuse me, because this is the first kind of full voiceover video I've done. So yeah, here we go. The first DIY I'm sharing is really easy, it's just making this bunny bag into a cushion okay I'm waving hello don't know why but yeah I got this bag from Poundland I also picked up some of the polystyrene stuff in a long time ago so I'm going to make use of that and this hair bow I'm going to use that as well for these other tools you're going to need some needle and thread you're going to need glue I got some tacky glue here just in case scissors I took out my glue runner just in case but I didn't actually need it and also some hot glue, hot glue gun and hot glue. Spoiler alert, me and hot glue do not go well, I don't know why I'm doing a peace sign. Okay so I'm going to take off the label, don't be like me, use scissors and I'm just opening the handles, taking that bit off, there's the handles there and I'm telling you to please mind my nails because yeah they're not looking great. Okay, so they've got these little threads where the handles are, so I'm just going to cut these off. Now I'm trying to decide how I want the airs to fall. Airs are a bit long and I didn't want to cut them so I'm going to use some of the hot glue to kind of make it smaller by folding it in. I wouldn't advise you to use hot glue, I would just sew it with needle and thread if I was you because this didn't work out too well as you will see. Also I don't know why this first bit of glue, it was kind of orange, I don't know if it was a bad bit of glue from the last time I used it but it was horrible because it just showed through. Anyway so here I am putting it on and great time of it and I still carried on still persevered and yeah can you see it's kind of yellow it's not very nice so I'm gluing in a little bit to kind of make the airs flop over so that's what I'm trying to do and it was hot it kept on burning my fingers as you can see I'm shaking because it actually did burn quite a bit so here I am showing you that I'm going to be gluing it in so that I can fold it over to make the ears a little bit shorter. And that yellow glue was getting on my nerves. I don't know why it's yellow. It was really getting on my nerves. It's so annoying. So I'm just folding it over, but really, it was really annoying me. The yellow glue was annoying me, and the actual hot glue was annoying me. I should have just used needle and thread, but in a way, I tried to persevere, so yeah. I actually burnt myself, it burnt so bad as you can see there, so I found this piece of plastic thing and I decided let me try and move the glue with that because let me tell you, I don't know what or why but this hot glue gun today was so annoying. Now the ears are done, I'm showing you that I'm going to be filling the bag with the polystyrene filling and you can just use an old stuffing or an old bit of cushion stuffing if you want to. I was actually so surprised how much stuffing was actually in that pack and I just laid it out and then kind of unfluffed it a little bit and then just proceeded to fill the bag. When the bag was filled I decided I'm not using that glue gun so I used the needle and thread instead and just sewed the ears down. So that's what I'm doing here. 
and I decided to add more filling so that it would turn nice and puffy. So after I filled it up, I went to the air part and as you can see it looks really horrible with that yellow bit of glue and the glue itself. But I decided, oh no, I'm going to use some more glue. So yeah, that's what I'm doing there, I don't know why. Now I'm just taking out all the glue that was in the gun at the moment because it was really horrible. I don't know why it was yellow. I think maybe it was a coloured one actually. But yeah, so I just took all the glue out and used some paper to cover it up. So I'm going to try the new glue and just close the bag with the hot glue. So it's all finished but I was not happy with that top bit, I really didn't like it so again I would advise you not to use the hot glue but to use needle and thread instead so it can be nice and neat and not like that. But as I was going to put a bow on there it wasn't too bad. So here it is all done and the bow hides the messy part, I'm really pleased with how it looks. My older son says it looks a bit like Hello Kitty and it's already been claimed by another one of my sons. So yeah, turned out really nice. This next DIY is also a cushion but it's a bigger one and it's quite simple but it looks really effective when it's finished. I'm using the felt bonnet decorations from Poundland, the chicks, the rabbits and the lambs are the ones that I chose. I'll add a link to the spring and Easter Poundland haul video in the description box and I'll also put it as a card. So here I'm showing you my finger and it got burnt with the hot glue gun, it really did actually hurt. So anyway, you need a cushion cover. This one I got from Ikea and also the inner cushion. You can use a cushion you've got already. I've had these jumbo pipe cleaners for ages so I decided to use them. And I realised I forgot to show these. These are some felt decorations that I picked up in Sainsbury's last year. So yeah, I'm going to use them. So as the cushion cover has been folded in its packaging, it's kind of wrinkled. It's got the creases in there. You can iron it if you want to, but I didn't. And here I'm just laying out the decorations to see how exactly I want them to look on the cushion. I cut some of the green jumbo pipe cleaner and also filed the edges because after you cut them the wire kind of has an edge to it and it looked a little bit like grass. I realised that the flower decorations had some foam adhesive on the back so I took that off before I stuck them down. And here it is all finished, I love the way it looks, I love the colours and because it doesn't say Easter on there, it can be used to decorate all through spring, I really love it. This next DIY is also a cushion but it is and was and forever shall be a fail. <laughs> it didn't come out how I wanted it to come out but I thought I'd leave it in here anyway because um, if you try it maybe yours will come out much better than mine. It's one of them things where you have an idea and when you execute the idea it doesn't come out exactly how you wanted it to. In fact I hated it so much that I redid it so at the end you'll see that I I actually used one of the heart cushions that I used in my Valentine's DIY. I'll also put a link to that video in the description box and a card as well. So yeah I made it with the heart cushion instead and it actually came out really nicely. So it came out really nicely. I'll add a picture here and you'll also see it in the DIY lineup. Okay, so now onto the craft, and please remember I did tell you that it was not nice. Anyway, so I used a pillowcase. I got these from Poundland and they were £2 for the pack. Bunny ears and tails that I got from Poundland, and some die cuts that I cut out. And just out of the shot is the polystyrene stuffing. So I took one of the pillowcases and I cut it down to size. I wanted it to be kind of like a small rectangle kind of size. If you can find a small cushion, I think you'll just be best off doing that rather than doing it this way or having a lot of filling for your cushion. Anyway, so I sewed 
around the, the edges that I had cut and I'm just showing you here just a, a quick way to do it. Basically you put the needle in and make a knot and then you just go backward and forward without pulling the needle out and then pull it together like a drawstring. Pull the material taut and then you have your stitches all nice. And I'm just showing you that I left a bit at the end unsewn so that I can fill it after. And then you're going to want to turn your pillowcase or cushion case inside out. And I used a chopstick to get the corners out or you can use something that's long like a knife or a spoon or a ruler. Then I got the polystyrene stuffing filler and I filled up the cushion. You want to really fill it up really like kind of go overboard and fill it really really good so that the cushion is really nice and puffy so that the airs can stay in properly and not flop over you'll see what i mean in a little bit you want to push all the filling right down and into the corners really really get them right into the corners and this is where my chopstick came in handy i just pushed all the stuff in right into the corners after filling it i closed up the cushion with an invisible stitch. I tried to show you what I was doing, but you wanna put the needle through the first section, not all the way through, and then pull it over to the other side as well, just like that, and keep on going from one side to the other, and it forms an invisible stitch, and then you can just hide your knot inside the cushion as well. So it should look like this, where the stitches can't be seen, and it also helps if you use the same coloured thread as your project, and I mean this isn't perfect but yeah it looks hidden and that's what we want. So I'm just using my die cuts that I made from old material to make some eyes and to see how it looks. Then I got the bunny ears and tail and I just took it out of the pack. I cut the bunny ears off and yeah there's wire in there and that's what keeps the actual ears stiff on the headband but because it's wire it was really heavy on the finished product. The funny thing is when I used the ears for the heart cushion inside was plastic so if you have the plastic inners it might work better than the wire ones. So I'm just showing you the wire and here I'm just showing you these artificial nail removers. Because I got burnt so badly the previous day when I was in the shop I found these and I'm using them to protect my fingers. So I'm just using the hot glue to, to close the ears back up, but I wouldn't, re I wouldn't recommend this because it makes it quite hard. So now I'm just cutting off the elastic of the bunny tail and I'm going to use the hot glue to glue it on. And it worked really well, the hot glue worked well for this job. But I will just glue it on after I've done the ears so that the cushion can be flat while I'm doing that. So I'm just laying out the bunny ears how I want it to be on the cushion. And then I'm using pins to hold them in place while I sew them on. So when everything was put together, I realised that the ears were drooping down because of the metal. So here I'm just showing you that I'm taking the metal pieces out. Then I decided to shape the ears by putting them in a little bit and then sewing them together so that they wouldn't droop down. After everything was sewed together again, I thought that the ears needed a little bit of support so I ended up sewing the metal back into the ears but pulling them down a little bit. Then I cut the cushion and pushed the ears back through with the metal. Then I sewed them on again and it seemed like I had sewn these ears on like 50,000 times. Then I neatened up everything because I could see that there was some of the black wire showing. Now everything's finally put together. As you can see, it just looks misshapen. I'm trying to shape it up, but I think it really needs more stuffing. So here I am playing with the die cuts, 
trying to set them out how I like them. I thought I might want the hearts as the eyes, but it didn't look like I wanted to. Then I tried the heart as a mouth. Nope, still didn't look like how I wanted it to. So I just decided, let me just use the ovals. So I used the hot glue and yeah, it actually worked really well for this kind of job as well. So here's the finished result and yeah, I'm not happy with what it looks like. It looks like some cushion ghost. I don't like it. So after that fail, onto something nicer. This next DIY is fun and bright and I've done two variants. One that is quite involved and another one that isn't. Hi, subscribe. Oh yeah, that rhyme. I picked up these flowers from Poundland. They were in the wedding section. You need string, scissors, tissue paper, die cut pom poms, tweezers, and I used the unicorn eggs from Poundland and some signs that I got from Sainsbury's. I picked them up in their sale last year, but you can use any signs that you find or you can even make some. So these little unicorn eggs, oh my gosh, they are so cute. I just had to grab them up when I saw them. If you didn't have these and you still wanted to try something like this, you can use plain eggs and put faces on them or and put faces on them. You can decorate them with flowers or whatever you like really. And you can even make them into unicorns if that's what you like. So I opened them up and I was taking them out and um, why has one not got its feet on them? Like they've got some hearts that they stand up on as feet and look, this one here, it doesn't have the foot. Yeah, I'm vexed. Look how it just dropped out my hand. Oh my gosh, yeah, no foot, no foot for the thing. So I had this pom-pom garland from Christmas. So I'm just cutting some of the pom-poms off because I had an idea to put the pom-poms on the back of the eggs to look like bunny tails. I decided to use the egg that didn't have no feet on it to try out the bunny tail to see if I liked what it looked like. And I didn't really like it to be honest. It was a little bit too big. So... So here I'm making some mini bunting. I'm using string and some die cuts. You can use die cuts and string or ribbon or whatever you like. I measured the string. If you don't have any die cuts, you can cut the pieces by hand. I used card and I'm just placing them on the string to see how it looks. I use tape to secure the bunting pieces onto the string. And this tape is so cute. It's a shame to even use it. But anyway, yeah, I use this tape. And you can use sellotape or masking tape, washi tape, any, any kind of tape really. I use some tape at the end of the string to secure the bunting onto the basket. So this part is the fiddly part of the DIY. And this is what I was talking about. The two variations being one being more involved than the other. So I went to a baby shower and we was helping to decorate the hall and making these paper flowers and they looked so nice so I thought I wanted to make some smaller ones to go into the basket with the eggs so I tried to recreate them at home and as I said I was making them smaller and I don't know if it's because they were smaller why it wasn't working out well or if it was because the tissue paper wasn't that great I do not know but it was take it took ages to even get oh my gosh the the fluffing part of it but they kept on ripping and everything so I turned the camera off and continued to make them so that I could kind of get the hang of it and find out exactly what I was doing wrong. So for these flowers, you want to make accordion folds in them going back and forward, back and forward. Just like you would make paper fans, just backwards and forward. And um, it helps if you kind of make the folds crisp. So that's why I'm doing it against the table. So I make sure it's nice and crisp again by folding it together. Then I get some string. You can use thread, twine, um, even fishing. I think it's called fishing thread, that invisible thread. And you want to tie a knot in the middle. And you want to make it quite tight. The mistake I was making is that I wasn't making it tight enough. So it wasn't holding it in place. So you want to make it quite tight or taut as it were. So the, the paper will slightly buckle but that's okay. 
Then I cut the ends of the string off, but if you're going to make these flowers to hang, leave the ends on so you can hang the flowers up with them. Then you cut the ends into the shape that you want them. I wanted like round petals, so I cut round. And I also cut away from the end to make them smaller. But like I said before, I think because they were so small, that's why it's so fiddly. Now you fan the ends out, kind of like stretching them out, and you do that to both sides. Then you open them up on on you open it up on both sides. Now it's time to fluff out the petals, and you just want to separate the layers and pull them apart. And this part is quite fiddly, and this is where paper kept on ripping but if it rips a little bit it's not too bad because the tissue paper is quite forgiving and it, it adds to the look but you just keep fluffing it out pulling the layers separating them from each other to form the petals so when they're finished they should look fluffy like this and you just keep repeating until you make as many of the flowers as you want And now for the fun part, just going to set up the flowers and the eggs exactly how I want them in the basket. And yeah. And here's the one with the bunny tail on him. And when I put him in, it didn't really matter that he didn't have feet because the flowers kind of set him up. And now time for the signs from Sainsbury's. I actually love these. It's so cute. Really, really nice. As I said before, you can make your own signs or you can find some. There's some around in, I think I saw some in Waitrose, Tesco, um, craft shops will have some. But yeah, you can make them yourself. You can make them out of card. But these are kind of like, like plywood. Oh, son number two made some cookies and he came to give me one. He kind of flopped it. Because he forgot the eggs for egg. You know how he added eggs for? Oh yeah. He forgot to add it. So, he had to add it after. But they're, they're cookie style biscuits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You put sugar in it. Don't forget. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, back to the DIY. So I opened up the pack, and oh my gosh, I just I, I keep saying this, but I actually love these so much. They're so cute, so nice, and really durable. So anyway, um, it's got a turn right, turn left. It's got this bunny that says hop along. That's like a kind of chalk like a chalk paint kind of colour and it had this really cute chick that says fly this way like a chick balloon and an egg that says excellent keep looking like egg excellent <laughs> so I popped the balloon in and I realised that they needed some support so I just got some white tack you can use blue tack, white tack, pink tack, any tack really <laughs> any tack really so yeah and I'm just going to make a kind of support underneath the signposts so that they can stick to the basket and stand upright. And then I just basically put the signposts where I want them to be, where I want them to go. And because I'm using two baskets, I'm going to put an arrow and a decoration in each. And here's the finished basket. And even though the, the tissue paper flowers were a nightmare to make, they, I must admit they actually do look really nice and effective. And I love the colours. And the colours really match well with the eggs. Now on to the second basket. And this one is going to be less involved because we're going to be using the white flowers. So that, that I already made. That makes the craft really simple and easy. And it still looks nice when it's finished. The flowers have a stem that can come off. And the wire stays in the stem. So the heads of the flowers can come off. We have a little piece at the end of the flower. But it doesn't matter. So I just put the flowers in the basket how I wanted them to sit. Then I put the signpost in where I wanted them using the white tack for support. Then I placed the eggs in there. So I had a look at it and I quite liked it. It looked quite nice. I took a picture of it and I did like it but I thought maybe there was something missing. 
So I took the leaves from the flowers and put them in there to have a look at how it looked and I really did like it. But I didn't like the look of the leaves together so I cut them and put them in separately and I like that much more. I wondered if the basket looked a little bit plain with the white flowers so I put some eggs and carrots in there to have a look at them and see what they look like. It did look nice but it looked a little bit cluttered so I just went without them. So that's the basket finished. I really love the way it looked. The white flowers look nice. And here they are with the leaves on it. You could add the carrots and the eggs if that's the look that you're going for. Either way, I'm really happy with these little baskets. And on to the last DIY, and just the same as the rest of them, this one is simple, easy, and it's also really fast. You need a photo frame. I bought a pack of two from Poundland, and it was a four by six size. Some die cuts and some string. The pack of carrots that they have in Poundland also. Some glue, a hot glue gun will be good for this. Some puffy stickers, I think I got them in Powerland a few years ago, but you can use any stickers you want. I'm also using the sticker pack that's not shown here, that is in Powerland at the moment. You can also use a photo or a picture of your choice. First of all, I'm gonna make a banner for the photo frame. I'm gonna get the string and measure it. And then I get the die cuts and put them on the string and I secure them with tape. Then I open the photo frame. I take the backing off. Please be careful of this. I use scissors, but yeah, I wouldn't advise it because as you can see, I'm not very careful with it. And I'm going to use the same paper that came inside the frame to put my sticker onto. So I decided to use a bunny rabbit. I'm going to have carrots on the frame and I thought that the puffy sticker by itself looked a bit plain so I decided to use some flowers from the sticker pack and these stickers are really really nice they're kind of hard they're like chipboard a little bit so I tucked the flower behind the rabbit so it looked like he was standing in front of it and they match all the bits that are in at the moment and I'm just showing you the rabbit and the chick I love them so lovely and I just put the frame back together again, put the picture in and the back in, and it looks really, really nice, so lovely. And obviously you can just leave it as is, but as an extra, I'm going to be adding some carrots on there. I did glue them on with a hot glue and it worked really well with this, but I took the carrots off and put them in a different way because I preferred that. You'll see it in the end lineup. Now it's time for me to put on the banner and I'm playing around with it and I noticed that the end ones, I don't like the way it looks, so I took them off. I secured the banner on with tape. I just put the tape to the back of the frame. You can use clear tape if you don't want it to show. I decided to adhere the end banner pieces on with the hot glue and I just stuck them on to the frame itself. I decided it needed a little bit extra still, so I added two flowers to the middle of the banner. I wasn't so happy about the carrots, so I'm just trying to play around with them. As I said before, I actually took the carrots off and sat them down differently. And that's it, the finished photo frame. I'm just playing around with light so that I can take a picture. I'm so happy with how it came out. So cute and I love the colours. As I said before, the frame can be used to hold any picture that you like. And here they are all together. Cute little spring decor. I really enjoy making these. Thanks so much for watching. Comment below. Let me know if, if you decided to do any crafts or DIY for spring. Like if you like this video and definitely I think I should get some lights for the hot glue burns and the fails oh my goodness anyway <laughs> share this video with people who are into diys and everything else and i'll see you soon bye I don't have it right now. Can you go to your bed? Your bed's in there, isn't it?